soas major some so shall we start with soas major right is it okay okay yes okay now i'm waiting for your answer uh, if people can also type it in the chat box people can also voice out by turn on the mic see look at the soas major muscle deeply think take your time answer perfectly i want the function okay either standard mover or reverse mover reverse mover whatever you are going to say it's okay fine but this muscle have attachment from here to here which means this side also it can move vertebral side also it can move femoral side also it can move okay then it passing the vertebral joint uh, hip joint and the sacroiliac joint clear it has function of these three joints here to do mistakes once we do mistake only we can learn better okay keep that in your mind always one is hip flexion good one hip flexion excellent so hip flexion will occur because it is attaching to the medial aspect of the femur medial aspect of the femur with the muscle fiber pull happen in this way it helps to flex the hip good job excellent spurti then uh, lateral rotation lateral of rotation the, of the hip wow who said that uh parvati parvati that's up to you great is it possible for you to explain mm -hmm. because it is attached with the medial the part, of the part of the femur excellent that is the medial part of the femur if it is pull happen rotate outward so let me demonstrate it is attaching here right yeah mm -hmm. Middle aspect of the femur. If the pull happen, see, even though we are touching the uh, middle aspect of the femur, this is an anterior portion. You can see this is an anterior portion of the femur. The posterior aspect of the femur. Trochanter. And it crosses posteriorly. Ah, it attaching the yes. posterior, almost little posterior aspect of the femur in medially. So if this pulls, this part faces faces us. This part facing what? So it creates outward rotation. Excellent. Correct. So if it is full, this part has to, this part will face anteriorly. It creates external rotation. Okay. Everyone understand? Yes. yes sir. Not the nail expo. Okay. Great. Excellent. Superb, guys. Excellent. And trunk flexion, like um, Spur final. Excellent. Spurti again. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So trunk flexion, if this is stable, if this is, uh, sorry, if this is stable, if this move, proximal aspect moves, mm -hmm. it attaching the vertebral part, right? Anterior part of the vertebra, it pulls down, it flexes the trunk. Yes. Good job. Excellent. Again, I'm very happy. We're doing good. And Lateral flexion. Hey, who said that again? Sutika. Sutika. Okay, excellent. Sutika again. So, as Sutika said, attaching lateral aspect of the vertebra, attaching lateral aspect of the vertebra in single side, unilateral muscle contract. Sutika, you have to specify, okay? Very good. If unilateral muscle contract, if it is pulls in this aspect, it creates the lateral flexion. Agree? Yes. Excellent. Superb. Yes. And Try, try to think. So you said some function in the hip. You said some function in the vertebra. Now you missed uh, pelvis. You missed pelvis. It also crossing the pelvis. Just think in that way. I'll give a clue like that. You can type also, Subhasni. Is there an anterior tilt? Okay. How it anteriorly tilt? Because if proximal it stable be... or distal stable? Ah. Posterior tilt? No. If it is posterior tilt, how it get posterior tilt? If it is an anterior tilt, how it get po anterior tilt? Anterior tilt. Is because, it is crossing... anterior tilt. because it's crossing anteriorly, it pulls to uh, anteriorly. Ah, exactly. Then you are saying that distal part is stable. Hmm. Distal part stable, proximal, proximal part is moved. Distal part is stable, proximal part moved. It attaching the lower portion of the trunk. It pulls. See guys, one thing we have to understand. It pulls. So it creates trunk moving forward. Trunk moving forward, then it can create the anterior pelvic tilt. Just hold the anterior pelvic tilt. Is that can able to do posterior pelvic tilt? Yes, sir. How? 
when the distal part is moving like okay. when the hip when flexion the is there part is pulls upward hip flexion along with hip flexion posterior pelvic can happen everyone understand and agree along with yes. hip flexion posterior pelvic tilt will happen clear this is understandable spurti yes sir yes sir super now when it comes to anterior pelvic tilt hip flexion is combined movement of posterior pelvic tilt perfect now you have to ask me question trunk flexion how can it be combined movement of anterior pelvic tilt if it is attaching anterior part of the trunk if it is attaching anterior part of the trunk if it is pulls down trunk flexion will happen trunk flexion will happen trunk flexion will happen at that time also flexion is combined motion of flexion is combined motion of posterior pelvic tilt yes Extension, extension of the hip, extension of the lumbar spine is the combined motion of so anterior pelvic tilt, right? Hmm. So, yes. how can it create the anterior pelvic tilt when proximal aspect moves? Now, it will work as an anterior pelvic tilt. Yes or no? I am like this only. I always confuse you. Can you please repeat the question? Okay. If the proximal aspect of the psoas major moves, distal sable, if it is pulls like this, it mm -hmm. creates the anterior pelvic tilt. If it is right, then don't raise your hand. If it is wrong, then raise your hand. Now I'm clear, Santi? Yes, sir. Good. If it is pulls down, it creates anterior pelvic tilt of the pelvis or posterior pelvic tilt of the pelvis. I think I confused enough. So you are telling that if there is trunk flexion, does it create posterior pelvic tilt or anterior pelvic tilt? Exactly. Because hip flexion, the, mm -hmm. the proximal stable, distal move, it creates posterior pelvic tilt. Everyone agreed. Mm -hmm. If distal stable, proximal move, it creates anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt? It creates posterior pelvic tilt. Okay. Spooth is said posterior pelvic tilt. How many of uh, them is going with her? I think it's anterior pelvic tilt. It's anterior, so pelvic, it's anterior pelvic, pelvic tilt. Like because distal is stable and only anterior is moving. Hmm. And more fibers are there attached on the with the spine. With the spine. With the spine. So it pulls it forward. It pulls it forward. Yeah. So it creates a compound motion even though it's not attached to the pelvis. Only a slight anterior pelvic tilt will be there. Excellent. Who said that lastly? Amir. Amir, excellent. Right. Anterior pelvic tilt is right. But actual mechanism, as we study lumbar pelvic hip control, lumbar pelvic rhythm, it has to create posterior pelvic tilt. But the way the muscle attached, the location of the muscle attachment, for example, other muscle like rectus subdominus if you take or any other muscle if you take, if it is pulls upward, these muscles, these muscles are not that, none of the muscles attaching directly on the lumbar. Most of the muscle attaching on the spine or something, rectus, uh, external oblique, oblique, internal oblique, rectus oblique, everything, it flexes the lumbar spine. It directly, I will, I'm giving a ra rationally, a reason of why it helps in anterior pelvic tilt, okay. It flexes the thoracic cage, the thoracic spine to forward by creating the lumbar flexion, by creating the lumbar flexion, getting to the lumbar flexion. But this muscle directly attaches to the lumbar. Even though it creates the lumbar flexion, it has to pull the pelvis. It attaching very closer to the pelvis, as Amit said, okay. See, look at here. It attaching here, if it is pulls, if it is pulls, flexing the trunk is possible, but along with that, anterior pelvic tilt only can possible. If the same muscle, if the same muscle attaching more superiorly, it while flexing, it can create posterior pelvic tilt. The location and architecture of the muscle attachment directly uh, anterior to the lumbar spine, so it creating an anterior pelvic tilt. Clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So, distal part move, it creates posterior pelvic tilt. Po proximal part move, it creates anterior pelvic tilt. So, pelvic tilt is not only by psoas major. We see tight hip flexor. Tight? Tight hip flexor, what we blame? Low back pain. Low back pain, tight hip flexor. Your pelvic tilt was anteriorly, okay. so much you were tilted. <laughs> but also, same hip flexor contribute posterior pelvic tilt when distal part is moved. That is why understanding anatomy plays huge role in understanding the moment. 
So shall I move to next muscle? Okay. Good. Okay. Quick summary gives. Can you give quick summary? What are all the function provided by the psoas major? Hip flexion. Hip, hip flexion. flexion. Sorry, hip flexion. Hip external rotation. Hip external rotation. And unilateral flexion. Excellent. Unilateral flexion of the trunk. And flexion of the trunk. Bilateral muscle helps in flexion of the trunk. Unilateral muscle helps in lateral flexion of the trunk. Good one. And then in pelvis, proximal pull happens. It creates. And distal pull happens. It creates. Posterior. Posterior so how many functions have we created so far? Six. Six. It also stabilizes the hip joint anteriorly. It also stabilizes the uh, sacral leg joint anteriorly. It also stabilizes the vertebral joint anteriorly. So total nine function, three stabilization function. In e sentry function, almost everything is opposite. Okay. So you know nine function of the muscle now. This muscle provide nine function. Before uh, two weeks, if someone asks what was the function of psoas major, how many functions you could have named apart from hip flexion? Maybe just two One to three. Two. Uh, just keep it yourself. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm not sharing something is superior or inferior, but see, this is how yeah. it works. If you learn anatomy in this manner, yes or no, keep in answer yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, something. This is how you have to understand the movement by learning the muscle. Great, excellent. So I'll move to next muscle, guys.